Well, I always was um, a drawer, if yes, there is such a word. I, I was always engaged with drawing as a kid, and um, I think that's what I was strongest at through high school and uh, my formative years here in the Okanagan when it was uh, Okanagan College. Uh, I, back at the old school, I studied here and continued on in drawing and started picking up more of a material practice, started mixing sculptures, turning my drawing into d drawing installations. Um, with my MFA at UBC, I still continued specializing in drawing. Uh, I sort of won the fellowship for drawing for my year and um, you know, was merging that with sculptural works. Um, it, it wasn't until a, a while later that I picked up on film, and, and that's where I see a real connection um, between my drawing. Um, I see drawing far closer to film than I do with painting. They're both very time-based, and there's that temporality to them. So uh, for the newer work here in the gallery here, um, it may seem like a big shift from drawing, but I find the process and how I think intuitively in regards to film cutting very, um, very akin to drawing. And uh, you know, you're drawing with with the viewfinder, sizing up compositions, all, all those things around structuring it of imagery and temporality. I think apply to both. So uh, I've basically, most of my art training has been in BC. I did one, one additional summer, a residency at the Bounce Center for Arts, and I consider it sort of that part of my formal training, along with just doing it, you know, for most of my life. You know, a, a lot of people might think about this show as like it's about science fiction or fan culture, but it's really about the landscape. And that's been a big part of uh, my work from sort of developing as a mature artist and contributing to that sort of um, identity that we construct of ourselves as Canadians through the landscape. So I see all this fan culture this work around science fiction, sort of looking at psychogeography, um, how these fans are creating these mental maps in the landscape, sort of location scouting. It all ties to this larger, uh, almost too large in regards to Canadian uh, idea around the landscape. So I've explored specific places in the landscape and um, I'm, I'm not interested in the romantic idea of the landscape. I'm looking at all the layers that exist beneath it, social, political, um, in regards to law, um, you know, that seeing it as a contested site and uh, challenging um, sort of the romantic view of the landscape that I think is still being portrayed as part of our identity, you know, with the Olympics, postcards, and, and such, that it is more complicated, more convoluted, and more fraught with um, contradictions rather than um, any sort of unified uh, portrayal or vision. Yeah, so, so that's the heart of my practice is really interrogating that landscape. But more recent, I've been taking subcultures of different um, different natures and sort of reinterrogating this these questions that need to be asked about our understanding of the landscape. Well, science fiction fans, um, I've done work with uh, skateboarders, looking at how skateboarders navigate urban environments. So that's maybe pushing it outside of the realm of what we traditionally think of landscapes, but also. Um, you know, marginal groups in relationship to the landscape. So I've done pieces with uh, tr Chinese truck gardeners living on the Musqueam Reserve at, um, up near the endowment lands at UBC. And so just interactions of the landscape, social interactions and all the nuances and, uh, you know, um, knots and um, perplexities that come from from looking at that landscape. So I really dig and look, and so how the work comes about, it might be film, it might be an installation where I'm digging and doing a sort of pseudo 
archaeology on site and bringing materials into the gallery. I, I like to get my hands dirty. I like to be out there and I'm an outdoor person. I like exploring so that, that's, uh, I see all those things as inseparable from the more formal things we associate with art making, putting pen to paper um, or brush to paper or sculpting. Yeah. I, I think drawing came first, but um, I'm a very pluralistic artist. They all fed upon each other, and um, they're all informing each other. And um, I think that's a big, you know, if one was to group me, you know, put a put a tag, you know, what what do I do? I would say maybe installation artist, and because I'm sort of uh, recapitulating all these mediums poetically and making them work. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a very multidisciplinary art world or pluralistic art world we're in now. So um, there's more freedom to be doing things like that. I was always a, a fan of Robert Smithson's work. All through my undergraduate period at UVic, I, I really um, studied his ideas on the second law of thermodynamics, entropy, how things break down in nature, um, all his earthworks uh, out to the land. But it, it took me a while to um, sort of a, make the connection between him and this lowbrow culture of science fiction fan, geek culture. And uh, uh, Smithson himself was um, a big fan of pulp fiction or new wave science fiction. Guys like, uh, he, read, he was reading a lot of uh, J.G. Ballard. And you can see those influences in his writings on the pieces he did, in the voiceovers for the films that documented um, the earthworks that he created in the desert, but also um, the spiral jetty itself, this spiral itself, that was a real mainstay for an iconic image for time travel for the period. So for Doctor Who, you have the swirling time vortex. Um, Hitchcock used it in films like Vertigo. So it's, you know, any sort of passage of time. Star Trek had the time vortex, and it became this entry point for me to take something very avant-garde and blend it with science fiction. But the more research I did in some of his essays, like, um, oh, I forget the specific ones, but he cites time travel. He's looking at a lot of crystal crystallogy in, in his works, uh, so how crystals grow. And, um, and he uses a lot, he used a lot of mirrors in his works. So um, a lot of Smithson's early writings on mirrors and these ideas about the fourth dimension um, actually tie into a lot of new science fact around quantum physics. And, you know, he was talking about four dimensions now when we're getting around string theories, we're talking about the possibilities of. 11 dimensions of hyperspace, which I'm not going to explain now. And yeah. yeah, well, you're going to see the spiral motif come up in a lot of my drawings. It, it's, um, and also, uh, like it was a big part of Smithson when he built the spiral jetty on the Great Salt Lake in Utah, there was a myth of a whirlpool. There still is this myth that um, a whirlpool that um, spontaneously sort of forms near Antelope Island. And there's a, a myth with the aboriginal groups there around it and, pi and through the pioneer days. So there's already this idea of uh, a whirlpool transporting, you know, one to somewhere else, the Atlantic Ocean. So I, I've taken things further and, and sort of have been looking at uh, uh, within quantum physics the idea of wormholes, which is, you know, sort of bridging the gap between science fiction and science fact or hypothetical, um, you know, gateways to other places. And, you know, I think as an artist, you can take liberties. Smithson took liberties. Um, but that's what I'm try trying to break down within my work, um, trying to blur the lines between the fictive and the real. So, um, you know, when a viewer comes in and sees some of, some of the things in my films and my drawings and sculptures, there'll be many tropes that you'll find in science fiction. And, 
you know, one will just assume, okay, that's out there, that's within the realm of imagination, but then I'll drop in um, a section where I filmed at Pavilion Lake, um, where there's these underwater reefs growing that may be akin to the earliest formations on Earth, and possibly there was formation similar on Mars, when if there was, if or when there was um, water on Mars. So, um, you know, sometimes these instances where um, science fact is stranger than science fiction. So I, I, I don't ever um, really try and create a linear um, sort of trajectory in, in learning or um, didactically trying to explain things to the viewer. I, I like to keep viewer on, on their toes, the viewer on their toes, and more importantly, hopefully ask more questions and answer them within my work.